and you stay on this team. So, I mean, I don't know if you ever heard the story, but like the the reason I left MSNBC is I got a speech uh, from the head of the network, Phil Griffin, who said, hey, look, man, I'd love to be an outsider. Outsiders wear leather jackets, they ride motorcycles, they're super cool, but... <laughs> I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I've never ridden a motorcycle. Motorcycles actually kind of scare me. But they that's scare it. me too. Yeah. <laughs> he said, but this is NBC. We're insiders. And I was just in Washington. They're not happy with your tone. And we're the establishment here, and you got to start acting like it. Whoa. Isn't that amazing? It's, and it's not just amazing. It's like a scene in a movie. Exactly. That's what I always say. I felt like I was in a movie. And I was like... <laughs> I'm like, dude, and maybe maybe he got off on that. Maybe he felt like he was in a movie and he was going to give this big speech, right? Right. But as I talked to, I don't want to name the person, but I talked to another anchor that was there, and that we had lunch, and that person was like, why did he say that to you? Like, that's such a, you're supposed to be more subtle than that. Yeah. Like, that was such a stupid thing to say, and especially to you. You came out of the internet. The whole thing is, like, truth-telling and being super progressive. Why did he say that to you? And not even give you a raise while he's telling you. <laughs> well, hey, no. The way to do it is to say, listen, we're in, you're an insider, so here's I have a new package for you. Right. And this package is, you know, shares and this and See, Joe, that's... You nailed it. You nailed it because that's what came next. No. Okay. So, so in that speech, uh, I'm, uh, I've been working at MSNBC as a host, and then uh, Keith Urban leaves. They give me the six o'clock slot, right? And I'm on there from January to April. Okay. At that point, April, I get the speech, and I think to myself, "Fuck that! I'm not doing that." Right. I will go the opposite direction. I'll criticize Obama more. I'll criticize the Democrats more, right? Because I don't want to play their game and then like get mediocre ratings and then they say you got... So I turned it on. Between April and, and the beginning of July, I murdered in the ratings. Highest ratings they ever got at 6 o'clock, okay? Because I was more me, right? And so like in stylistically, I listened to them. They would say, like, be more senatorial. I'm like, why would you want to do that? I'm like, senatorial? Sen- I'm like, sen- <laughs> senators are the most boring people I've ever met. Why would you want to do that? Right? That's crazy. Anyway, so uh, I open it up, and then at the end of June, Phil calls me back in, to, to your point, right? And he's like, Jenk, um, we decided we're going to put you on the weekends, uh, not on prime time at 6, okay? And we're going to give that to somebody else. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I thought I was prepared for it because I had gotten the speech a couple of months earlier about how. And you kind of ignored it. Right. Yeah. And I knew that's when I was like, I'm done with this, right? Right. Like, if they want to keep me because I got kick ass ratings, great. I'd love it. Okay. As long as they let me say what I'm going to say. If they don't want to keep me, fuck. Okay. So he pulls me in and I said, okay, Phil, so let's go through a quick exercise here. Are my ratings good? Well, he can't deny it. They're, yeah, they're the best they've gotten at six. Yeah, they're great. Um, like, is anybody, am I a dick? Like, is anybody in the building said, hey, Jenks a dick, it's, he's hard to work with, right? Nope. Great. Like, everybody likes you in the building, right? Yeah. And every, <laughs> like, like, great relationships, right? Right. Um, I said, so if you put me on the weekends and it's not related to the speech, right, then how would I ever get out of the weekends, right? Like, well, then what is it related to? Like, if I murdered on the weekends, I already murdered at 6 o'clock right. on the rating. So we can't. And I, so I said, what is it? And he stood there for about 30 seconds without any answer. And I was like, wow. And then he said, I'll double your salary. <gasps> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll double your salary, but what? I'll double your sal- salary and put you on the weekend still? Yes. So you go from prime time to weekends, but they offered me literally double my salary and for a three-year contract. Wow. So they thought there's no way I'm going to turn that kind of money down. Like, I've been a struggling radio host and then internet host my whole life at that point, right? There's no way I'm going to turn that down. And, uh, you know, look, it's easy to say they don't know me, ha-ha, I'm a tough guy, yada, yada. But the reality is what they underestimated was the size of our audience. I knew that I could go online, which I never left. I did the online show while I was at MSNBC. People were like, well, you already got on TV. What are you still bothering with the online thing for? I'm like, no, 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 you schmucks. The real deal's yeah. online. So I had the luxury of being able to go back to this giant audience online and telling them to fuck off. That's beautiful. And explaining your story. Yeah. But you see, that's exactly it. You nailed it again. Because part of the reason they get double your salary is so you shut up. Okay, so they say, oh, progressives, what are you talking about? I got this fire breather 
Cenk Uger from the Young Turks on on the weekends. He's part of our staple. Ask him. Ask him. And then you have to come out and be like, yes, MSNBC is very good. They like progressives. And you're thinking about your boat. And you're thinking about your vacation house. Right. And you're thinking about your vacations. <laughs> you're thinking about all this shit that that money provides you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's And I hilarious. got young kids. Yeah. And, and look, if you didn't have the luxury that I had, think about if you're in one in one of the other host positions. There is no fallback. The fallback is a cliff. Mm. You're either going to get paid really well, you're going to be a star, they treat you so well when you're there, car rides everywhere, first class everywhere, etc. Or you face the abyss. Nothing. And you were almost, you become unhirable. That's right. If you don't work well with MSNBC, why would CNBC pick you up? Why would this network or that network pick you up? They wouldn't. The word goes out in the street, he doesn't play ball.